A lot of people tell me that I'm crazy to think we need electric vehicles with over 400 miles of range, but it's because I think the future should not have any gas powered vehicles. And if you're with me, I think this idea will make sense to you. Looking at EVs all the way back in 2011 to today, even a little bit projecting into the future, with the exception of Tesla, they haven't had a very long range. They started out maybe 60, 70 miles, and even looking forward into the future, they're barely approaching 200 miles on average. Well, if you add in Tesla, of course, they influence this, and you can see that the average going forward would be over 200 miles. And if you look at just Tesla compared to the overall trend and the trend that doesn't include them on the bottom, you'll see that they are way far and above. Even when they first came out, the very first EVs that they had, the Model S, had a very long range, well over 200 miles on average. And going into 2020, when they had then have the 620 mile range Roadster, they are just blowing away the competition here. And for most people, that amount of range is fine. They don't really need this 400 mile range. And, and this is where the argument comes into play. The current average commute is just about 27 minutes long, which is actually up quite a bit from back in the 1970s. And the latest data I could find show that each way people drive on average about 16 miles. So let's put it between 30 and 40 miles just to work and back every single day. So 200 miles, 150 miles is plenty. However, with a longer commute and with more and more time on the road comes more stress, more frustration, more soul-destroying traffic. And the last thing on top of all of that that you want to ever have to worry about is range anxiety. And even on a road trip, superchargers for Teslas are all over the place in the markets that they occupy. And many other companies such as ChargePoint and EVgo are spinning up new fast charging stations along common highways. So long distance travel in an EV is truly possible in today's world. However, when you want to stop at one of these stations, whether it be a fast charging from EVgo or a supercharger from Tesla, you're going to spend quite a bit of time there waiting for your car to refuel. Now, if you believe in that future that doesn't have any fossil fuel based vehicles, no gas or diesel or otherwise, you have to look and see what it would take for an electric vehicle to compete with the range and convenience of a gas powered car. Let's take a look at the 2018 Honda Civic as an example here. This car gets a combined miles per gallon of 36 and has a 12.4 gallon gas tank, which means that on a full tank it gets around 446 miles of range. Then, when you want to refuel, it only takes about 5 minutes at a pump. And compare that to a Tesla Model 3 Long Range, the latest offering from Tesla. This one has around a 75 kilowatt hour battery, which is pretty big by EV standards, which gives it a 310 mile range, one of the highest of all the EVs available for sale today. However, when you want to refill this, it's going to take you about 60 minutes from zero to 100%. And that's just because of how these batteries work. The first 80% take about 30 minutes, and then it takes about another 30 minutes for that last 20%. So you're looking at quite a stark difference when it comes to refueling these vehicles. So side by side, what we have is the Honda Civic with a five minute refuel time and the Model 3 with a 60 minute refuel or recharge time. The capacity of 12.4 gallons for the Civic and 75 kilowatt hours for the Model 3, again, giving it the 446 miles for the Civic and 310 for the Model 3. So there's a big difference between these two in terms of range and convenience. But you might be asking, why does it matter when, again, the majority of the trips you're taking, a very large percentage of them, you won't need this added range or convenience? Now is a good time to talk about the Pareto Principle. You might know this as the 80-20 rule, and it's named after the Italian economist Vilfredo Pareto, who noted the 80-20 connection while at the University of Lausanne in 1896. Essentially, Pareto showed that approximately 80% of the land in Italy was owned by 20% of the population. And in many business cases and industries, you find this same phenomenon when you look at some data. There's even a chart named after him called the Pareto chart, as you can see here. 
And it essentially describes that same phenomenon. When you look at the data, 20% of the effort yields 80% of the results. And the real lesson here is that that remaining 20% of result, whatever it may be, really takes 80% of the overall effort. So that means while it may be real easy to get to that 80% mark, the rest of it is gonna take far longer. This is why certain technologies to be perfect really take a long time to develop. So yeah, EVs today cover 80% of your needs easily. In, in a lot of people's case, maybe even more than that. But if we wanna get rid of fossil fuels entirely from our system of transportation, we need to cover all 100% of the use cases out there. So with the Honda Civic, it's 446 miles per fill and a 12X improvement on refueling time, giving it a range equivalent of over 5,000 miles. It is a truly tremendous difference when you look at it from the range and convenience standpoint. And so in order to understand what it would take for the Model 3 to compete head to head with the Honda Civic in terms of convenience, I drew this chart and I like to do it because you can easily see how a little equilibrium appears in the comparison between range versus charge. The way this chart is laid out, the bottom shows us the factor improvement. So a one to six to 12 X improvement over the current rates of the range of the car versus the charge. So in this equilibrium point here, you can see that at about a 600 to 500 mile range and a 700 to 800 kilowatt rate of charging, our Model 3 would be able to compete head to head with the Honda Civic. Now I know what you're saying, that is a tall ask. That is something that, I mean, no one is really planning on. We haven't heard these numbers from anyone out there. Is it even possible? Well, there's many more options here that could give us the same level of convenience even without achieving some of these numbers. The first are incredibly fast chargers. So Porsche has a 350 kilowatt charger already out there being tested. Tesla is reportedly going to have around a 250 kilowatt update to their supercharger, which is double what they currently have. And a new prototype in Germany just showed off a 450 kilowatt charger, giving you 100 kilometers or about 62 miles of range in three minutes. Another one is the Israel-based startup StoreDot that has this ultra-fast charging battery. They recently received a $20 million investment from BP, the energy company, and their claim is that they have a battery system which can be fully charged within five minutes and enable a range of 300 miles, which is 480 kilometers. So in that kind of relevance to our world, that would be very similar to what the Model 3 would have. So if this were to work, you could essentially have a 300, 310 mile range vehicle charge in five minutes, very close to our convenience of the Honda Civic. And others are making it so you don't even have to stop and charge. You can actually charge your car while driving, like in Mario Kart. Honda is actually the one that came out with this, and it's a solution that lets the car charge on the road wirelessly as you drive over it, and they've tested it up to 90 miles per hour, which is incredible. Of course, a big challenge there is that 90 miles per hour, the amount of distance that this road would have to be set up for would be tremendous. You're talking an incredibly long stretch of road to enable this type of wireless charging. And it, chances are it wouldn't even actually charge the vehicle, but it would let you use the energy it's providing wirelessly to run instead of having to use your own battery. So it could kind of enable what they call unlimited range, which is a really interesting idea. And then of course there's the solid state batteries and one company in particular is making waves in this called Dyson. Yes, the vacuum company is looking to make an EV that uses a solid state battery. Now research in solid state battery technologies dates back to the 1950s. And the idea is that instead of having a bunch of little batteries networked together, you can kind of have one massive battery pulled together so that it has much more efficiencies in being able to store and transfer the power. And some estimates I've seen show that a solid state battery would increase the range of a Volkswagen e-Golf to approximately 750 kilometers compared to its present 300 kilometers. That's 466 miles of range, which means that to compete with that Honda Civic, we would need a 960 kilowatt charger. We're getting closer. 
And according to Yol Development's market forecast, mass production of solid state batteries will begin by 2022 and represent less than 1% of lithium ion battery demand by 2025. This might explain the relative low interest from equipment suppliers, which might change when large solid state battery manufacturing capacities start to be built. And then there are also supercapacitors, which when combined with graphene, could be charged in seconds with even better performance and added range. So maybe it's not that crazy. Maybe we'll have electric roads that charge our cars as we drive over them, and we'll have supercapacitors with the ability to fully recharge in a few seconds. We really don't know what the future holds, but there are tons of people and companies out there working on this. So I, for one, am really excited. So anytime I hear about a four or 500 mile EV, I really just, just open up because it, it to me represents uh, another step towards a future without any fossil fuels being used to move us from A to B. So if you're into that kind of thing, I'd love to hear your thoughts below in the comments. Is there something I missed? Is there a new development, something else out there that I need to dig into? Let me know with a comment. And of course, don't forget, when you free the data, your mod will follow. I'll see you guys back here in the next one.